Welcome to the What We Do channel. Today we want to do a little tour of our vegetable garden in mid-July. Okay, well, these are my three compost bins. The one on the far left there is um, almost completely empty. It, now it's receiving new stuff, and that won't be until next year that that will go into the ground. These two guys are both ones that have been uh, working over the winter, and they, I filled them up into July 1st, and now they're just going to work down until the fall when I finally do my spreading. Looking good already. Okay, now, this is going to be short and sweet because it's a little garden. Get away, wasp. This is the, our carrot bed. Um, although I'm not protected against the carrot rust fly with, by raising them up or having a, a barrier around them, I don't like the look of that stuff in my garden. Uh, I, the way I'm protecting them is that I planted them later in the season. I put them in around June 1st, and that seems to really help you miss a lot of the trouble that goes along. I like the way you planted dillweed in the garden. Well, the dill is a volunteer, and I actually take it out of the other four main beds because, because of the carrot rotation, but I certainly can use it in the, in the carrots, as long as I don't let it go to seed in there. Everywhere else, it's completely welcome. I let it go to seed. I never have to actually buy dill or plant dill. These carrots will only get fertilized. I fertilized them once in the beginning of July, and then I'll give them one more fertilize um, around the 1st of August. They really don't need much, and I like the idea that they're taking stuff out of the soil uh, that maybe have been building up in the soil. So these are our two rhubarb plants. The wine I'm holding in my hand right now actually has some of that rhubarb in it. Um, I hope to get one more pick out of these two, maybe in another week, and then leave them to uh, get strength into the roots for next summer. I have a brand new one. I chipped a piece off. And he was just a little thing when he started this spring. Um, if I didn't keep it watered, it would wilt. I was worried. And now he's grown into this great monster. I'm not going to harvest this at all this year. Just let it build up energy. I think it will be an, a welcome addition to our rhubarb next year. That's a nice stalk already. Wow. This little vine is called Himerald. I forgot to show this in our last tour. He's brand new this year. I wasn't sure if he was going to make it. But it's a cross between um, Thompson Seedless and a, a, a Canadian grape called Niagara. And it grows really well in our climate, makes a really nice table grape. Coming along this way, these are uh, two of my garlics, chestnut red and Spanish roja. I think they're going to be ready in a couple of weeks. I probably need pretty soon to stop watering. I like to pick them when... There are four green leaves left. That represents the wrappers around the, the bulbs. Coming along. These are my Picus tomatoes. Very pleased with how they're doing this year. I've been tying them up with a system called the weave. I have a cage on the bottom and a weave on the top. Everything's all, all tied into one, so it's nice and strong. Getting it's going to be a really big harvest, I think. Very pleased. No disease yet. Uh, moving along. F These, are, of course, are all um, plum tomatoes for sauce. This grapevine here, believe it or not, started from a seed from um, when I was crushing grapes out here. I don't know what, what, it, what variety it came from, but the grapes themselves are just tiny little things. The leaves are really nice, and um, the camera lady's thinking about using them for, for cooking. You know, you can wrap up like your your, your meat and your stuff in these and boil. That should be nice, never been sprayed. I think eventually I'll probably replace this vine with a cutting off the, um, the himrod. These are some of my beans. Won't be long before harvest now. These are Bush Blue Lake. There was a little bit of a, we had such a cold spring. It was a bit of a slow start, but they're doing fine now. This garlic over here, called Sweet German, it's in the porcelain horticultural group. It actually goes a little bit faster than the other two varieties I grow. I think it, maybe about a week or so I'll be harvesting these. No more watering for them. So this is our solitary bee house. Um, really a lot of activity going on in here right now. The, the solitary bees, uh, one bee 
does as much pollination as 80 honeybees and they're completely non-aggressive, they're a pleasure to have around. Um, what they do, when they hatch out in the spring, they, they, they mate and then the female chooses a tube and she's going to go, she um, packs it in with pollen and, and honey or, or nectar and lays an egg and seals that section off and then does it again and again and again until they come all the way to the end of the tube. Some of them seal each section with leaves, I think leaves, I think you can see the leaf cut leaves in some of those tubes, and some of them get sealed off with mud. Beautiful things. Oh, this is another in interesting fact. Um, the, they lay female eggs at the back of the tubes where it's safer, and then as you come towards the front, the males go in and the males emerge first. But the reason the males are at the front is because they're more expendable. Say a woodpecker or something came along, guess who's going to get eaten? Moving along, I've got one solitary potato pot growing in here. They're doing really well. I don't know what this variety is. It was just a potato that um, we had a bag of and we really liked them. They were yellow flesh potatoes and the, uh, towards the end it started um, sprouting. I thought, oh well, it was, it was the right time. I'll do a pot of potatoes. There are four in here. The interesting thing is they haven't flowered and I, re I remember reading that some of the newest varieties actually don't flower anymore. That You know how very few potatoes ever put on a fruit anyway. But when they don't fruit, on, especially when they don't flower, all the energy is going into potato production not into um, production of flowers or, or fruit. So in behind these tomatoes here is a row of Swiss chard that you can't see. It's struggling a bit, but I think it'll be all right. And now in the front here, I'm growing, I'm trialing a different kind of tomato this year, a different variety. It's called um, Plum Regal. It has the disease resistance that I absolutely need. I need tomato spotted wilt virus resistance. But it also apparently has a resistance to late blight, which I usually affects my tomatoes towards the end of the season. Never to take away my harvest, but you know, if I can keep away keep it away, I will. And I've got some nice tomatoes forming down here. I'm gonna be treating these today for blossom end rot to protect myself. These are our cucumbers. They're gonna get a drink of water soon. The variety is called um, Darlington. The, it's a hybrid that's um, a Gyanaceous hybrid with a Monaceous um, open pollinated pollinator mixed in a certain extent with the seeds. The Gyanaceous means it's only got female flowers. Monaceous means complete. It has the male and the female flower. Obviously you need some male flowers if you're going to, to um, pollinate the females. That's usually what they do with cucumbers. If you've got a good hybrid, you'll get a um, a Gyanaceous that is your hybrid and they'll blend in maybe 13% seeds that are uh, an open pollinated Monaceous. No cucumbers actually yet but I can see them coming. So these are our peppers. The variety is called Marcato. It's a sweet pepper, an Italian pepper. They go really long and by September I'm supposed to ripen up just a, a boatload of uh, nice long beautiful sweet red peppers. Growing some more green beans on top here and more bush blue lake. We want to do some canning with these. Thanks for watching the What We Do channel. Have a fantastic day.